Welcome to iLecture Online, and here's another really good example of how you do max min problems in algebra. And as I said before, max min problems, uh, another way of saying max min is maximum and minimum problems. Uh, the best way to do this usually is in calculus using derivatives, but if you end up with a quadratic equation, algebra is a really good way to do that. So here's a good example on how to apply that. Now this is a little bit more difficult of an example. We have a window that has a uh, a rectangular base and a semicircular top and the perimeter of this window is supposed to be 24 feet and the question is what dimensions will give you the maximum size window in other words the maximum area of the window and um, the way you normally do that maximum problems is you start out by first determining what's being maximized and in this case the area is supposed to be maximized so we write that down maximum area The second step to a problem like this is now to find an equation to describe the thing you're trying to maximize. In this case, we're trying to maximize the area, so we want an equation that says area equals in terms of all the other variables. So let's uh, call the height of the rectangular portion h and the width of the rectangular portion w, and of course the radius of the semicircle area is, um, is r. Then the area would be the area of the rectangle, which is h times w, plus the area of the semicircle. Now the area of a circle is pi r squared, so the area of a semicircle, half of that, would be one half pi r squared. Now the next thing we need to do is somehow express the area in terms of only one variable. And you can see there's three variables, height, width, and the radius of the semicircle. So we need to come up with two constraints that will eliminate two of those three variables. So let's take a list of our constraints here. The first constraint is the relationship between the width of the, of the window and the radius. You can clearly see that the width would be twice the radius, so let's write that down. Width equals two times the radius. And then we can use this constraint, plugging that into our equation right there, to get rid of the w, the width in our equation. So now we can write that the area is equal to the h times 2 times the radius plus 1 half pi r squared. Okay, we have one more constraint to go. We want to get rid of the h. So the other constraint is that the perimeter of the window is 24 feet. So 24 feet is equal to the sum of all the sides of this window. So it would be h h and w, so that would be 2h plus 1w plus the circumference of a half a circle. The circumference of a circle is uh, 2 pi r, so half of that would be pi r, so plus pi times r. And so the circumference of the half a circle plus 2h's plus a w should add up to the full perimeter, 24 feet. All right, we now want to go ahead and get rid of the, uh, um, get rid of the h here, so let's solve this equation for h. So we can say that 2h is equal to 24, and then moving the other two uh, terms to the other side, it's minus w and minus pi r. And of course, the w here uh, we know was equal to 2r, so let's replace that. So we have 2h is equal to 24 minus 2r minus pi times r. And then if we divide both sides by 2, we get h is equal to 12 minus r minus a half pi r. And this allows us now to substitute that into the equation to get rid of h. And when we do that, we get the following. Now the area is equal to, instead of h, we write 12 minus r minus 1 half pi r times 2r and then plus 1 half pi r squared. And then if we simplify it a little bit by getting rid of the parentheses, we can say that the area is equal to 12 times 2r is 24r, minus r times 2r is minus 2r squared, and a minus half pi r times 2r, the 2 counts out to 1 half, we get minus pi r squared, and then plus 1 half pi r squared, still from this term right there. Now you can see that these are very similar, so we can combine these two, so the area is equal to 24r minus 2r squared minus a half pi r squared. 
And then if I factor it in R squared, we get A is equal to 24R. Um, let's see here. Minus, maybe we'll call it plus, and then we'll put the negatives inside of parentheses. Minus uh, 2, still need the minus there, minus 2 minus 1 half pi times R squared. So I wanted to do it in such a way that I can easily come up with a quadratic equation. And maybe I should have just pulled, pulled the minus out anyway. So let me do that and rearrange it. So I'm going to put this first and this second and pull the minus out. So it's minus, this is equal to minus 2 plus 1 half pi times R squared and then plus 24R. And there you go. Now we have a quadratic equation. We have the R squared term. We have R to the first term, uh, first power term. We don't have a constant term, but that's okay. So just like we normally would have a y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Now notice that the square term is negative. A square term that's negative means that the parabola opens downward. So we'll end up with something that looks like this. And that means we have a maximum value in our parabola, and that's what we're trying to find. Since the area, since the parabola describes the area of this uh, window, then the highest value of that parabola would, it, would then represent the biggest area of the window. We're trying to find that. And of course, the window, that, that point right there, is the vertex of the parabola, which has the x and y coordinates of the vertex. So we'll write that as x sub v, y sub v. Of course, in this case, the variable is not x, the variable is r. So we're looking for the r sub v. And the r sub v, just like the x sub v, can be found by taking negative b divided by 2a, b being the coefficient of the x to the first term, uh, first power term, and a being the coefficient of the x to the second part term. All right, so in our equation, b is 24. So we write this as minus 24 divided by a. a is this portion right here. It's, of course, negative this. And times 2, so it would be minus 2 times 2 plus 1 half pi. All right, the minus 2 divides into the 24, so this becomes equal to 12 divided by 2 plus 1 half pi. And of course, now we need a calculator to figure that out. And I just happen to have one in my back pocket, so let me figure out what that is equal to. So we have uh, 3.14159 divided by 2, and then plus 2, and then divide that into 12. And I get 3.36, 3.36. And of course, since this is in feet, right, because the perimeter was in feet, that should be 3.36 feet, which means the radius of this window should be 3.36 feet. Now we can find the width because the width is twice the radius. So since the width is equal to 2 times the radius and the radius is equal to 3.36, so that's... 6.72. So the width of this window will have to be 6.72. Now the only thing left to do is find the height, and the height is defined by this equation right here. So let's use that equation to find the height of the window. H is equal to 12 minus the radius minus 1 half pi times the radius. Okay, so this is equal to 12 minus 3.36 minus one-half pi times 3.36. All right, so let's work that out. So we have times 3.14159 divided by 2. Uh, add that to 3.36 and subtract that from 12. And oh, wow, the height is also equal to 3.36. So, the dimensions of the windows would have to be the height of 3.36 feet, a width of 6.72 feet, and a radius of 3.36 feet, and that will give you the largest or maximum area window. Okay, that was a difficult problem, but again, if you follow the right steps in the particular order, you should be able to get through this. So let me recap quickly. We were given a window that had a, square, a rectangular base and a semicircular top. They told us that the perimeter has to be 24 feet, 
and they're looking for the dimensions that make that into the maximum area window. So you first determine what's being maximized or minimized. In this case, we're trying to find the maximum area. Then you come up with an equation describing the area of the window. So it would be the area of the rectangle, h times w, plus the area of the semicircle, which would be half pi r squared, since pi r squared is the area of a circle. Then you realize that you have three variables. So you have to come up with two constraints this time to get rid of two of the three variables. The first constraint here is that the width is twice the radius of the semicircle. You replace the width by 2r, so you got rid of that. The second constraint is that the perimeter should be 24 feet, so the perimeter should be twice the height, plus the width, plus the circumference of a half a circle, pi r. And then you solve that for h. You plug that into your equation right here, and now you have an equation with only one variable, the variable r. You then rearrange the equation to the point where you can clearly see that this is a quadratic equation, just like this. This is your a, that's your b. You don't have to have a constant. And now you're looking for the vertex, the highest point of your parabola, which has an x and a y coordinate. In this case, it would have an r and an a coordinate, but you only care, you only care about the r coordinate in this case, so we're going to look for r sub v, just like we normally look for x sub v. And by definition, the first variable of your vertex is always minus b over 2a. You recognize your b, you recognize your a, you plug those in, don't forget it's 2a, and then you solve that, and sure enough, r is on 3.36 feet, and then you use your two constraints to find the other two variables. And that's, your work. that's how you work a problem like this. So hopefully that gives you a really good idea. Uh, they don't come much more difficult than this, so if you can manage this one, you're in really good shape. All right, catch you next time.